Hello, this is the first installment of a series where I will examine a little bit of the alternate history of monarchies. In this inaugural video, I will pose the question, what if the Carlos movement in Spain was successful? Now, first of all, it would be important to explain who the Carlists were. Well, in short, they were a political movement that proclaimed the Infante Carlos Maria Isidro Benito de Bourbon as the rightful heir to the Spanish throne. And the reason that this political movement proclaimed the prince as the rightful heir to the Spanish throne was because of succession disputes now. Traditionally, the Spanish monarchy used male preference primogeniture, which basically means if there is no male heir left, then the descendant can descend from a female line matrilineally, uh, versus Salic law, which was used by the Bourbon dynasty, who was the ruling dynasty of Spain at the time, which took its hints from the French, uh, which used Salic law, which actually forbids any female lines from inheriting the throne. And essentially what happened is Ferdinand VII died in 1833, and he named as his successor his eldest daughter Isabella. His brother, the Infante Carlos, was previously heir apparent, but was a passed over at Isabella's birth in 1830. Carlos followed Carlos's line of succession as supported claimants to the throne, starting the Free Carlos Wars from 1833 to 1876, where Carlos and his descendants became stripped of their Spanish titles in an 1837 decree. Later, after the wars, the movement eventually lost steam and later split on the issue of the 1936 Spanish Civil War, and two other factions were formed, one that supported Prince Xavier of Bourbon Parma, the other that ex supported Archduke Carl Pius, Prince of Tuscany. And the party's influence has mostly declined in recent years, but is still active, albeit more moderate. So with all that real history in mind, I'll move on to answering the question. Let's say that Carlos's claims on the Spanish throne were deemed valid. Uh, and for the sake of simplicity, let's say that Ferdinand VII picked him, not Isabella to say heir apparent, thereby upholding the Salic law tradition of the dynasty. Now, after Ferdinand's death, Carlos would take the throne likely as Charles V, King of Spain, not to be confused with Charles V of HRE, known as the first in Spain. In real life, Carlos renounced his claim to the throne in 1845, passing it to his son. But since he would actually be king, I'm assuming that he reigns until his death in 1855. None of the Carlos Wars ever having to happen under him or his successors. And after Carlos's death, the throne would then pass to his firstborn son, Carlos Luis, who would then likely adopt the reignal name Charles VI. Now in real life, Carlos Luis, who was the Count of Montemolin, died from typhus along with his wife and brother at the age of only 42 in 1861. But if he was the king and not just a count, maybe he wouldn't have contracted disease, being maybe further apart from his constituents and actually reigned longer. We can only speculate about when he would have otherwise died. In any case, he and his wife were childless going into the 40s, so the throne would probably still pass to his brother, Juan, in any case. So Carlos's brother, Juan, takes the throne by 1861 as King John. Uh, it's worth mentioning, in listing the claimants, Wikipedia calls him King John III because there were two medieval King Johns of Castile before the union of the Spanish kingdoms. But I think that's a little confusing. We'll call Juan King John I instead. By the way, it's also interesting to mention that Juan was also a pretender for two other thrones, the Mexican Emperor and the legitimist French throne, which claimed descent from the Bourbon dynasty of France. Um, his descendants were also were claimants to the latter. Like his father, Juan renounced the throne in 1868 for his eldest son, but again, that likely wouldn't happen here, so Juan reigns until his death in 1887 instead, the throne passing to his son, Carlos. Carlos would thereby become King Charles VII, and... Similar to his real-life contemporary, Alfonso XIII, seemed to have a militarist and diplomatic mind. I wouldn't say for certain, but my guess is that the Spanish-American War still happens in Carlos's timeline, possibly even earlier than 1898. Still probably ending in a loss for Spain, because regardless of Spanish ruler, the United States still would have started that war, whether or not the USS Maine sunk or not. Uh, 
In this case, though, Carlos was a full-grown man, unlike Alfonso, who was only 13 years old at the time and had a region. And so much of the blame for the loss would be actually shifted towards him, even if he was effectively a constitutional monarch. And upon his death in 1909, the throne would then pass to his son Jaime. Jaime, who would have taken the throne as James I, again, like his grandfather John, there were two other King Jameses of Aragon back in the 13th century, but I won't count them. Uh, and Jaime was a lifelong bachelor, and he had a very distinguished military career, owing to his father, mainly spending it in Poland before succeeding his father. I speculate he wouldn't get that much abroad military training as the heir apparent of Spain, though, and maybe he'd have an easier time getting married, too, holding more power. But we'll have to ignore the latter, and therefore he died childless in 1931, being succeeded by his very old uncle, Alfonso Carlos. Alfonso Carlos, who would have already been 82 at the time of his succession, had married but had no children. It's not much to say about him, as he died only five years later in 1936, just a few months after the Spanish Civil War had started. This leads to the natural question. Would the Spanish Civil War still have happened in our fictional timeline? It's actually quite difficult to say. On the one hand, Alfonso XIII would have never ruled, and made the monarchy unpopular with his neutrality stance during World War I, as well as allowing Miguel Primo de Rivera to become dictator in 1923. It was because of that and several other disasters that the Second Spanish Republic was proclaimed in 1931, which was in turn overthrown by the Nationalists under Francisco Franco in 1939. There is a possibility, though, that all that would have never happened, but on the other hand, Carlos and Jaime both seem to have military backgrounds and could have overreached in putting Spain on the center stage of World War I, who knows, possibly even allying with the Central Powers. And with the likely loss of the Spanish-American War actually pinned on Carlos as an adult, who knows what this might have done with the popularity of the monarch. And hey, you know, right-wing nationalism was a greater trend in Europe at the time, so I would not doubt that Franco still creates a nationalist party and gains support. I'd say it's a toss-up as to whether or not the Civil War still happened, but if it did, the monarchy would very likely be overthrown, if it still even existed at all at that point in time. But what if it never happened? Or what if the monarchy got restored in 1975 after Franco's death, just like in real life? Well, this is where the matter gets complicated. Alfonso Carlos, like previously mentioned, died without children, and so he appointed his nephew, through his wife's family, Prince Xavier of Bourbon Parma, to be his heir apparent. And after Prince Xavier's death in 1977, the throne would then pass to his son, Carlos Hugo, and finally on to his son, Carlos, in 2010, who is the current most widely supported Carlos claimant. But there are others. The Carlos de Vismo branch supports the descendants of Bianca, daughter of Carlos, Duke of Madrid, their current claimant being Archduke Dominic of Austria since 1975. But it has been met with criticism as it's descended from a female branch, therefore undermining the entire source of the original dispute. Yet another branch supports that Alfonso XIII, being the senior member of the Bourbon dynasty in 1936, was the rightful heir. That branch splitting into two more branches depending on which of his sons, Jaime, who renounced the throne, or Juan, was his rightful heir. If the Juan claim was to actually gain wider support, that would mean that current King Felipe VI is the rightful heir to the Spanish throne, but I'll let you decide who you think is the rightful Carlist heir. Have a word down in the comments. Toodaloo!